Oh, I'm Bridget and today I'm going to talk about the tools you need to do some pretty inexpensive low-tech um, soldering in silver. Well, you can do it in, in with a lot of different metals, um, but it'll be silver solder um, on jump rings and just small pieces. First thing we're going to need is a solder iron. Um, I recommend um, minimum of 100 watts. This one's 200 watts. It's kind of overkill. And if your um, hands are, if you've got bad wrists or bad hands, this is not the unit. You really want to get the smaller unit that's 100 watts. But it's a Weller unit. Um, you can get them in any hardware store. Just it's and it's what they call a solder gun. It only is hot when you pull the trigger. They make it in 75 watt, um, 100, 120 watt, and then this one is a. 250 and um, 225 and this like I say this one gets a little hotter than I really need um, you can buy them at the hardware store new they come in a whole package with a whole set of different solder tips you also can get them off eBay or at auctions at junk sales um, one person will list them as valuable family antique and the next person will say a solder gun found in my dad's garage ten dollars look for the ten dollar guy I like the old ones better I think the windings are a little heavier inside the um, body of it and they seem and the body is a little heavier duty if you buy them new or old I don't think it matters almost every one of them is going to come with this pointy tip on it seems to be what most people solder with it is my least favorite tip on earth um, it makes a ball or a lump of solder it does not make a smooth place with solder but if you're doing jewelry we want to do a smooth place so what you want to do is it's either in the package if you buy a brand new one there's going to be one of these in the package um, if not you can buy an alternate tip the two kinds of tips that are good are the ones with a flat surface one's called a smoothing tip one's called a cutting tip i think this is the smoothing tip um, Basically what you're looking for is a flat surface, not a pointy surface. Most hardware stores are going to have one or the other of them hanging on the rack. If not, go on eBay, um, go on Amazon, somebody, some hardware store will have them and they'll ship them to you pretty um, quickly. But you want to install one of these two onto your solder gun. The next thing you need is the actual solder. Um, this, is, this came from a best solder chain. Um, Ace has a similar one, or, um, or yeah, there's just, and I'm sure Lowe's, anybody has one. Basically what it is, um, it's going to say on here hobby solder or silver solder. Um, the percentage is, this one says 96% tin, 10, 4% silver. It's going to be some percent silver, some percent tin. If you have trouble finding this at your local hardware store, I suggest that you go um, to online and you can either go um, like I say eBay or Amazon or an alternate thing is to log on to Ace um, Hardware's website or Best Hardware Supplies website both of them carry um, a kit like this what's going to be in the kit is going to be a tube of flux it may be liquid or paste doesn't really matter which is which. Some people have a preference for one, some have a preference for another. And about an ounce of solder. Um, it's just a little coil of solder, nice and shiny, um, and it's ready to go for your silver. So those are two things you need. To put the flux on, we need a paintbrush. It can be the cheapest paintbrush on earth. You can get one of those little metal ones from the hardware store in the plumbing department. But you need a paintbrush to paint the flux on with. If you're going to do a lot of soldering, by the way, um, this is looking a little tarnished, and if it gets tarnished, you need to clean it with uh, some steel wool. But this, uh, you can buy a whole pound of it online, and it's called Ultra Bright. The next thing you need is something to clean your paintbrush, or your uh, solder tip off with. This is a solder sponge. It comes looking like a piece of cardboard. When you get it wet, it pops up. It's not a plastic sponge, it's a natural sponge, so it's not going to melt on your, um, your solder tip. Don't go and buy a, a sponge at the grocery store because those don't work. You want to buy a solder sponge, so that's what these are. 
Um, then you need a heat proof surface. I like this little Pyrex bowl just to keep all my stuff in. I store it all in here, everything's hot, and I can keep it all in it. But um, that's good for just carrying around. What you need though is to protect your table. This is a piece of scrap drywall. A cookie sheet would work. When you drip the solder onto the table off of your jewelry, it's going to make a tiny ball of solder. It'll be cool in about 20 to 30 seconds. It's gonna, if you drop it on a nice hardwood table, it's going to leave a mark. If you leave it onto something like this or on a cookie sheet, it'll be cool in a few minutes and you can flick it off and throw it in the trash. So you just need some kind of surface. Um, if you're only gonna do occasional, you might try even a glass tray or a, or a plate or a platter, just something that's completely fireproof, basically, is what you're gonna need. Now, one alternate thing that I will talk about that is not absolutely necessary, but I like a lot, is something called a sal block. It's a sal ammonium something block. Um, it comes in a bigger cube than this. I cut it up and share it with friends or use it in classes. But it'll basically clean the tip to your um, solder iron a lot easier and a lot better than the plain old sponge was. But if you can't find one of these, a sponge is going to work. This is basically all the equipment that you need. Now the only question I'm going to have extra here is some people immediately say, well, I don't want to pick up a gun solder, um, a, a solder gun. I, they're too heavy, um, I don't like that they turn off and on, or somebody gave me a pen style solder iron. Pen style solder irons look like this. This one happens to have a pointy tip on it. You want one with a flat tip. Once again, you want one in the 100 watt to 75 watt range minimum. The problem with these is they're always hot. So unlike the solder gun where you turn the solder off and on and lay it aside, if you lay this down and it's hot, it's going to roll into your roll of solder, your flux tube, onto your paintbrush. And if you're concentrating on your jewelry, you're more than likely going to set fire to or melt something. Um, another great thing to melt is the rubber handles on your pliers if they happen to be setting on your uh, table. Um, when people bring these to class, invariably they set fire to at least one of my pliers in my class. So I pretty much don't encourage these. If you're at home, you're super careful, you're going to lay it aside in a dish or something every time you use it. Yeah, they're a lot lighter and they're a lot easier to use, but I don't like them personally. The last but not least is do not get one of these cool touch solder irons. I have no idea what the theory is behind these cool touch solder irons, but I hate them. People have brought them to classes multiple times and I have made multiple efforts to get them to melt anything. I'm not sure what they're supposed to do, but they don't do it. So if someone's gotten you one for a gift and thought they were doing you a big favor, return it if you can, because I do not like these cool touch solder irons at all. Um, next um, video is going to be how to solder um, some simple jump rings.